Welcome back to the channel. Today, this video is going to be about questions a prospective Tesla owner might have. My son-in-law, Braden, here. Um, you've seen his wife on earlier videos, which have gotten great views. Uh, specifically, where the tire blew with my wife on their trip and a couple other product videos. So, Braden is, and Abby are thinking about getting a Tesla. And so, he has a bunch of questions he wants to ask me. And then we're going to try having him drive for the first time to see what he thinks about driving a Tesla versus driving a regular car with one pedal driving and all that stuff. So, Braden, fire away. All righty. My first question is um, how do you order and after you order, how do you pick up the Tesla? Okay, so it's really unlike any other car company that I know of. You basically have the app and you've seen the app and you can see, or you've got the Tesla website. You basically pick your car, you pick what you want and then you order it. And you can either order something from scratch, like build it yourself, or you can look at their inventory and see what cars are available in your area and see if you wanna buy a car that's sitting in inventory. And I think that's something that you were looking at the other day, that there were some cars in inventory. So once you do that, once you get past that part, you basically say, I wanna buy it now. <laughs> you pay 250 bucks for a reservation fee, which is non-refundable, and then they'll call you. And if it's an inventory, you probably get notification that you got to pick it up within a week, I'm thinking. Normally, it depends on how far the timeline out is to, to uh, manufacture the car to get it. Okay. Um, but picking it up, super easy. Um, again, they're going to notify you in the app that the car is ready. They're going to schedule a time. You're basically going to go down there and pick it up. Now, if you financed it, then they'll work out the financing unless you say you want to finance it yourself. Otherwise, uh, they'll work out the financing for you. You go down and... Now, I had mine during COVID, so it was a little more touchless type pickup. I'm not sure how much that's changed, um, but it's pretty quick and pretty easy and pretty painless. I mean, the price is the price. There's no haggling. That's it. You're done. So it's kind of a hassle-free experience, but uh, it's pretty fun. It's fun, you know, especially seeing it for the first time going, oh, that's my car. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, the other question I had is, were there any problems when you got the car? Do you have to point them out? Or what if there is a problem, what, what happens? So Tesla, I don't know. I don't know if Tesla's known for build quality issues or if it's just Tesla owners are really, really picky. Um, but that's something that I definitely looked at more than I've ever looked at any car I've ever bought. I mean, every other car I've bought, I've kind of just gone, oh, there's the car, great, yay, we'll take it. Uh, I, because of all the things I've heard, I looked over it with fine tooth comb. The fact there's some apps you can get, um, one's called Inspect T, I think, or Inspect Tesla, where you can go through a little checklist of every single part of the car to see if there's anything wrong. What I would recommend is look through the car thoroughly um, prior to signing to make sure, is there any misalignment in the, in the panels? Is there any misalignment in the seats? We had, I think, like one of our seats was, the back seats were back, one was a little higher than the other, so it was misaligned a little bit. Um, I think our panels were all good. I think there was something wrong with one of the headliner parts. So just make note of all those um, and put them down at pickup, and then they'll basically schedule an appointment with you for you to bring it to a service center, if they can't fix it there, to bring it to a service center to get all that stuff taken care of. So uh, nothing major, and, and again, that's this is two years ago, two, over two yeah. years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, I hope that the quality is a lot better now and they're not gonna see that kind of stuff, but you would definitely wanna just look over it thoroughly um, to make sure there's nothing out of alignment, but it's it's a new car, it's gonna be good. <laughs> and then of course with an electric car, you have the, uh, the credits federal right. tax credits, how, uh, how does Correct. that work out? So, um, so this today is in May, or actually we're June now, of 2023. So the credit is based on whether the car qualifies, and that is not only the components of the battery and the battery construction, but also the price of the car. Um, so for example, a Model S and a Model X, they're too expensive, so you don't get the credits for those. A Model 3, I'm uh, sorry, a Model Y and a Model three do qualify based on the price. Uh, it was up until this last week um, that all Model Ys qualified, but some Model 3s didn't because of the makeup of the battery. In fact, it only qualified for half the credit. But this week, um, if you haven't heard, all Model 3s now qualify for the full $7,500 credit in addition to all the Model Ys, uh, which is great. 
Uh, and if you want to check out a video on that, I think Bearded Tesla guy did a great video explaining all that, going into great detail. But basically at this point, uh, the only factor the car qualifies is whether or not you qualify. And that's based on your adjusted gross income on your tax return. So basically, if you make less than $300,000 married, filing joint, $150,000 single, then you'll qualify based on your income, the car qualifies, you're done. The only difference this year in 2023 is that the credit is a credit on your tax return. Um, in 2024 and beyond, it will be an actual credit that you'll get against the purchase price of the car. So it'll be a little different. You'll get it right when you buy it. Nice. Um, but for this year, you'll basically wait till, until you file your tax return in early 2024. And then if you have enough tax liability, it will use all of that credit up and basically you'll get your withholding back. Um, it is non-refundable credit. So if you don't have enough tax to eat up that credit, then, and, and it's before any withholding or before anything you've paid in. If you don't have enough tax, you have the credit, then it would roll over, but they don't refund it to you. So, you know, most people with what they're gonna make, hopefully are gonna get the full amount of the credit, basically take it off their tax and get all of their withholding back. So uh, it's great. Now, in addition to the federal credit, we're in California. California also has a rebate that you can get. It works differently. You have to apply for it. It takes a while. It might took like freaking four months or something, but they'll actually mail you a check. So you'll probably get that before you even get any kind of federal credit. Yeah. And then you have to also check with your your local jurisdictions. Um, I live in the city of Reading, and the city of Reading gave me a rebate for having an electric car. Depending on where you live, you also could possibly get a rebate for basically owning an electric car, which which is great. Yeah. What kind of uh, accessories should you get right off the bat? Well. Um, I did a video on that. It's my very first video, and I'll put a link in the description down below. But there's a couple things I would really recommend. Number one is getting a screen protector. This thing is the most expensive thing. It's, it's the most expensive iPhone you'll ever have, and we protect our iPhones and our Samsungs with screen protectors. I would definitely get something to protect this. You can see I already have like a little chip in here. In fact, I think the chip is already gone up there. I think I have a little crack there. Um, and it's really easy to, to bang this when you put stuff in. I would say a screen protector number one. In fact, I would put the screen protector on when you pick the car up right away, first thing. Um, number two, floor mats. A lot of people don't like the floor mats. Um, it does come with floor mats, but they're kind of small little carpety floor mats. Um, I think the Max Spiders are great floor mats. These are the ones I got from Last Fit, which I really like for a winter floor mat because they wash off really easy if you have dirt or grime. Uh, the Last Fit are really nice too, but they're a little harder to wash. And I did another video on that earlier on about the comparison between Max Spider and Last Fit, but definitely car, car floor mats I would get. Um, I liked getting the license plate frame. Um, this license plate it comes with is like got 3M tape and it sticks to your bumper. And in California, we have to have a license plate frame. I didn't want to stick anything to my bumper and have to pull it off. So I got the uh, Quick Bandit by 1972 Creations. I did another video on that. I really like it. It's not cheap. It was like 170 bucks. Uh, but you know, when you're spending as much money on the car as you are, I, you want to stick something to the bumper, I didn't. So um, that I really like. But there are some other cheaper alternatives out there. People have brought up to me. Um, Possibly to a sunroof visor or the, visor, the sunroof um, screen shade because it can't get hot. Um, that's something you might want to think about, especially when we live in Reading. It gets, you know, today it was 100 degrees. In fact, right now it's 100 degrees. And it, it can get warm. It's not too bad, but it can definitely radiate some heat. Oh, charging stuff. So the Tesla no longer comes with a mobile connector when you buy it. Used to, when I bought it, it came with a mobile connector and it came with a J1772 adapter. Um, and we're gonna do another video, he and I, about charging and what kind of adapters you need. But I would for sure get the mobile connector so you could charge at home until you get anything else. Um, I would also get, the mobile connector now comes with both the um, both the regular 120 plug and the, 240, the standard 240 plug, the NEMA 1450. Um, I, I would get that kit with those two plugs. I also like having the complete plug kit. Um, I haven't used a lot of them, but I like knowing wherever I go, I can plug in wherever I go. You might think about, you for sure should get a G1772 adapter. So you can, I think where you're thinking of charging, it's a state charging station and you're gonna wanna have that to be able to charge uh, because it's like a, it's not a Tesla charger. Um, and maybe eventually the CCS adapter. Um, there's two types of charging. There's fast charging, which is DC. There's slow charging, which is AC. Um, and I think, you know, getting all the options you can is, is a really good idea. That's that's the bigger things I would think I would get. As far as range goes, how far 
far can you actually go in comparison to what it's what it tells you? Well, Tesla is really known for having, I think, rated range that is not reasonable. Um, it, most manufacturers they have a rated range, and and they're within the rated range. Tesla, yeah, I've not found that the rated range is accurate. I think this is 320 um, miles. It says, you know, when I got it, actually went up a little bit from when I got it because of a software update. Um, but I don't get anywhere near that now. Temperature is going to affect your range. Weather is going to affect your range. Uh, how hard you drive is going to affect your range. Tire pressure is going to affect your range. Um, so you're not going to get the rated range that they say. At any given day, depending on the conditions, you might get something different. However, I really love this. This is the energy app and it's in the car and it's going to tell you exactly what you're going to get based on how you've driven for the last 5, 15, or 30 miles. For example, right now it says I can go 132 miles, but the car says 191. So the rated range says I can make it 191 miles and the car saying, yeah, no, based on everything we know about how you're driving, you're going to get 131. So you really want to pay attention to this. I wouldn't count on the rated range. Um, but the other thing you're going to want to do, anytime you go anywhere, you're going to want to enter the destination so we can tell you where and when to charge. Um, that's key. I think people who get in the car and just drive it like a gas car, they're the ones that you see on the side of the road run out of power because they didn't know, hey, I'm getting low. I'm not going to make it to the next station. But if you plug in your destination in the car and say, this is where I want to go, it's going to tell you how many times you're going to have to stop, how long you're going to stop for, all of that good stuff. It's going to be very, very clear as to what gotcha. you got to do. Right. And then, uh, have you had a problem charging anywhere? Um, I think when we were in Texas and did that Texas road trip, another video you can watch, um, we found that there were a lot more Teslas there than, um, than they had planned for because Hertz just purchased a whole bunch of Teslas and dumped them into the market. And we had to wait. Um, in one case, it was like a half an hour. I have been to stations where the charger doesn't work, but usually I can just pop over to another charger. So for me, late, you know, first two and a half years of ownership, really have never been to a place where I couldn't charge if I didn't have to wait like 30 minutes to charge. Um, other than that, no. I mean, Tesla chargers, as we'll show in the next video we're going to do, super easy. You plug it in and you're off. You're done. Um, so it's just a matter of finding the charger. The, the app or the car is going to tell you where all the chargers are. Really simple. It's just going to plug it in. You can say, hey, uh, there's my next charger. I've got two in Rep Loft. I've got one behind me in Cottonwood. So it's going to tell you where you can go to charge. And it's going to tell you information about the charger, how fast it is, what the cost is, whatnot. So let's see. How long does it take it to charge? It takes to charge the car. It depends, right? Um, if it depends on if you're on a level two charger, like at home. It depends on if you're a level three supercharger, either a 250 or 150. And it also depends on your state of charge. And we'll see that in this next video. If you're at a lower state of charge, it's gonna charge a lot faster. It's kind of like, people explain to me, it's like a cup of water. When you're pouring water into a cup of water, you got you can pour really fast at first, and as you get to the top, you gotta to slow down so you don't overfill the cup. Yeah. The car kind of works the same way, that when you're charging it, it'll charge really fast at lower seats of charge. As it gets higher, higher up in the pack, it's gonna slow down. Um, the last 80 to 100 is gonna take you a lot longer than it is the first 80. Um, so the general rule of thumb is if you're out charging, you wanna stop more frequently and charge to less charge levels than don't stop at a place and charge to 100% because this is gonna take too long. I would say on average, I probably spend 20 to 30 minutes at a charge. I have spent longer um, and I spent a lot shorter. It just kind of depends. But usually, honestly, if you stop somewhere, plug in, go grab yourself some food, um, grab a drink, take a bathroom break, usually you're gonna find the cars ready. If not, you can play back ever for a couple of minutes or you can watch a Netflix on your, your screen and, and eat up the rest of the time. I've never sat there going, oh my gosh, this is horrible. I can't believe I have to wait longer. In fact, usually we've tried to eat and charge and we find that the car's done before we're done eating. So we have to run out, unplug the car, move it, and then go back to eating. So it, it's not overly burdensome, but it is different. It's not a gas car. It's not pull up, fill up for three minutes, five minutes, and off I go. It is going to take you a little more time. But, you know, it kind of changes your pace in driving. You take yeah. more breaks, you relax. I find I get to destinations a lot less tired or agitated when I get there. Um, what kind of maintenance have you had to do? 
Oh, so much maintenance. This car is just such a maintenance hog. Actually, no. Um, all I've done is the windshield wiper fluid, maybe twice, and I've changed the tires. Um, as you recall, his wife and my wife went on a road trip, and uh, they punctured the tire, and the tire was fine. It was repaired, but I decided I wanted to get a new set of tires. I like to have all four tires the same age, and the one tire would have been would have been newer, so I just replaced them. But I think, you know, they're like tires. They're gonna go, depending how hard you drive, right? If you're driving really hard in a Tesla and accelerating a lot, as you'll find out when we, that you drive, it'll accelerate really fast. Well, that'll burn up your tires. Yeah. So if your driving is not too bad and you're too, you're very reasonable in your driving, you know, you're probably gonna last 30,000, 40,000 miles like most, but no oil changes, no fluids other than the windshield wiper fluid, uh, nothing. Nothing to do really. Um, they do recommend service, and I'm gonna do for taking mine in, just so they can check everything over. You know, there's coolant in the battery and all that stuff, but um, there's nothing really that you have to do for maintenance. It's it's pretty maintenance free, which is amazing. Uh, have you had any issues with the car <clears throat> since you've gotten it? Other than the tire, which wasn't the car's fault, no. Um, we had some alignment things, like I told you when we first got it. Other than that, I've had no issues. I think one of these seats sometimes sounds loose. Um, and so I might take you to the service center to tighten it up, but I haven't heard it today at all. So, um, I don't know. Maybe it's when the, your daughter's car seats in here. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But, uh, no, not, not at all. It's been a great car. Okay. Um, what is premium connectivity and is it worth it? Premium connectivity. So premium connectivity is going to allow you to do some things that you can't do, um, it basically gives you internet on the car, right? For one, we have satellite maps. Um, if you don't have premium connectivity, if you don't have premium connectivity, you're gonna have regular maps like this. I like the satellite maps. So it's gonna give you satellite maps. It's gonna give you live traffic in the car, so you'll be able to see where traffic is. Um, it's also gonna give you the ability to watch Netflix, Hulu, no, yeah, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, YouTube, bunch of things in your car. No, not Hulu, sorry, I don't think Disney Plus for sure, because I like yeah. that. And Netflix. Um, subscribe to Village Tesla, you can see all things on YouTube. Um, it also gives you music streaming. Um, it gives you internet browser, so you can browse the internet. Um, live views with your Sentry mode. So you can, you know, you've got Sentry cameras all around the car that you can view on the car, but if you've got the uh, package, when you're not at the car, you can pull up your app, you can see all the cameras, what's going on around your car, in addition to the camera inside the car. You can see if there's anything in your car, so if someone's breaking in your car, you can see it. So gotcha. um, it's 10 bucks a month, <coughs> nine, nine, yeah, 9 a month. I think it's worth it, but again, I'm not gonna chintz out on a car that I spent this much money on. I wanna get all the bells and whistles and features, so. Gotcha. And what would you say, to sum it up, what is, uh, what are just general things that you like about having the Tesla? I think, well, number one, it's fun as heck to drive. I mean, you'll see this in a little bit here, but the, the acceleration is amazing. Getting on, getting passing cars, getting on the freeway, uh, it's just, it's crazy. Um, I did get the full self-driving because I wanted to have it. Um, I like, it's, it's still beta, it's still learning, uh, but I really enjoy having the car drive and watching it drive. If nothing else, I love having just the autopilot on the freeway, so when I'm driving like from Sacramento home to Reading, it's less stressful because the car is maintaining the lane, the car is maintaining distance, the car is even changing lanes to pass cars, yeah. um, which takes so much stress off the driving um, that it's a much more enjoyable drive. I get to destinations less exhausted from the, just that little mental, it doesn't sound like much, but that little keeping it in and do it, it, it can take a lot out of you, you know, especially like you, you're gonna be driving a lot back and forth. It, it would be nice to have that, to not have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, to get that $6,000 of full self-driving, I think right now is 15. I, I probably wouldn't get FSD right now because it's, you get a subscription if you, like, you want to use it here and there. But um, that, the software updates, this thing has software updates all the time. Um, it had it more frequently. Lately, it's been less. Um, and the last update I got only really updated full self-driving. But it's if there's a new future that comes out, you're going to get it too. Yeah. It's not going to be like, oh, well, the 2024 Teslas now have the ability to see a 360 view of your car, which you need Elon. You said you're going to do it. You haven't done it yet. But a 360 like bird's eye view of the car, um, you'll get it. Um, the only issue may be is the chip in your car good enough 
to handle the software, the processing, right? And I think, I definitely think my chip is one of the older chips I'd like to upgrade my chip, but you've got all the equipment in the car to do that. Yeah. Um, in fact, even if you buy a car and you don't get full self-driving, you're gonna have all the cameras, all the ability, all you've gotta do is pay for it and it turns it on. Yeah. So, so the ability to get the software updates are amazing because I feel like my car is new every, especially every Christmas, there's usually a Christmas update and you get a bunch of stuff and everybody gets it and my car is not dated, you know. Yeah. Um, another thing I really like is the one pedal driving. Um, you're gonna find that you don't have to use the brake and I'm very heavy on brakes. Um, and I usually wear my brakes out. In fact, I need to replace my brakes in my truck. But with the with the Tesla, basically you push your foot down on the gas to accelerate, you pull your foot off the gas pedal to decelerate, and you don't really have to touch the brake pedal unless you're in an oh crap moment, someone pulls out in front of you, or you just misjudge the feathering of the pedal. You gotta slow down, you gotta pull off in time to get slowed down enough. Um, but that's amazing, and um, I like every morning I come out and I got a full tank of gas. You know, charging at home is cheap. Um, charging at superchargers, you're gonna pay maybe 43, 30, 40 cents a, a kilowatt hour. At home, I pay 15 cents a kilowatt hour, which is cheap. Yeah. Um, and the gas savings that I get, especially where you're gonna be at, you might get free charging, it sounds like. So, you know, it, that's, that's amazing. In fact, if you're on a road trip, that's what you always wanna look for. Can I do some free charging? They take some more time, but you know, it'll be free. Um, at least for us, uh, maybe not for the people who let you use it, but um, it, that's, it's just, it's an amazing car. You know, I say it's a car, it's built around a computer, not a computer that's built around a car. You know, it's, yeah. it's they know the technology, the technology's dialed in with the battery and the software, and then they made it a car, you know, which yeah. it's, you're gonna find it's like nothing you've ever driven before. And I think you get spoiled. Once you have one of these, you get spoiled. It's fun to drive, so. So with that being said, I guess it's time to pull over and let you drive. All right, so we created a profile for you. All right. So showed him how to adjust the mirrors and adjust the seat, the steering wheel, all in his profile. We got a profile set up. So and we'll go once you put your foot on the pedal, brake pedal on once the, down on the, the pedal. Yeah, the brake. Yeah, brake. Sorry. There you go. Make it see you're in drive. Mm -hmm. And put your turn signal on. You can see here the blind spot camera tells you if there's anyone there. That's really nice. That's something they added since it's another software update. They didn't used to have a blind spot camera. Now we do. Nice. You see how it's when you when you pull your foot off. Oh yep, yep. <laughs> That's weird. It, it, it is take different. A minute to get used it to does that. take a little bit to get used to. Yeah. See you. Yeah, look. Yeah. All right. So let's get you some good acceleration here. Okay. So let's kind of gauge the traffic. Okay. Uh, hold on, slow, 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 slow. Punch it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Nope, we're already up to speed. Now. Okay. Now you can't get that in your Toyota, can you? No. <laughs> do not. What does it feel like? Huh? Like you're already going 80 miles. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's so quiet. Yeah, it's it's so quiet. quiet. Yeah. Gotta watch that you don't get pulled over. You want to get pulled yeah, over? Yeah, no, I don't want to get pulled over. It's not good. Now, to so, set cruise control, that's just your basic cruise control. Just once down on the stock. So that's gonna be, it's gonna keep you, it's adaptive cruise control, it's not gonna keep you in the lanes. You can tell it because it just says, that just the speed is There's marked. There's a little, little line. There's also a little steering wheel up here. If you do it again. Okay, go down one more time. No, I'll do it twice, like da -da. Now you're in full self-driving, it shows you there. It also shows you the blue line that you're gonna stay on the front. Now it'll change lanes for you. So if it comes up on this truck and it sees that truck's going slower than what you're set at, it will change lanes to get I, over. I can make it turn. You can also now. by hitting the turn signal. It'll look, it'll automatically get over on its own. And you can see if the car next to you is red, it's gonna tell you that I can't change lanes. Okay. If it's blue, it's gonna say it's clear. In fact, it's back when you're passing someone, if, if you see it's blue, then you can get over. So that's a new Prius. That's a new Prius. Oh, that is a new Prius. Still have Tesla battery. Sorry. She looks like a Prius on her. <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah, it's nice. It's definitely different than driving a gas car. It is. In the fact of 
it's just quiet and there's no shifting and you don't have to wait for the car. Exactly. That's the instant torque. Yeah. How do you get it out of this? Just uh, go up once. Up? That's going to take you to everything. So now you're fully driving on your own. No cruise control and no uh, full of truck. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing car. So if you guys have any questions, we didn't talk about this video. It's been a little long video. Uh, drop a comment down below. I'll try to answer it. Um, again, he's thinking about getting one. We're going to go look at some charging and see what that looks like for a, a Tesla driver. To, or sorry, would be a Tesla driver, both level three, level two charging. We'll see what that looks like and talk about that. But if you've got something that you have a question on, you're thinking about buying a Tesla, or maybe you bought a Tesla and you've got some questions, drop a comment down below and I'll see if I can answer. I try to get back to every single comment that's dropped in my comments, even the ones that aren't very nice. But you know, hey, there's haters out there. So uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and catch us on the next one for part two.